brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's cereal. The best to you each morning. From Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our next guest, our guest panelist, has written a book called Still... I knew I'd never get it right. Kids Still Say Funny Things. And it's going to appear condensed in October's McCall's Magazine. And here he is now, Art Linklater. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a beautiful blonde gal who always has something going for her. Me, Arlene <laughs> Francis. Now, a gentleman who's as sad as I am tonight because both of our young sons leave for Deerfield Academy on Wednesday morning. The birds are leaving the nest, but we still have Bennett Surf. And here's surprise, surprise, is our superb, scintillating, seldom silent panel moderator, John Charles Bailey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Mr. Linkletter, Art, if we may. Thank nice you, John. to see you again on the panel. And I must say, this is a big week in Bennett's life, and I'm proud of him, even though I do like to get a chance to knock him over once in a while. He's a remarkably good businessman, and if I read the papers in California correctly, your random house is going to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange this week. Wednesday, John. On Wednesday, and this, uh, this is quite an achievement. So he's a good businessman. He's got lots of failings. As a panel member, <laughs> well. But as a businessman, he's a good businessman. No question. About it. Congratulations, Thank Bennett. Thank you. Well, needless to say, Art, uh, you have come back to the old arena. We plan to make your next half hour as unpleasant as possible for you and as pleasant as possible for us. That goes for your colleagues on the panel. We will also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger. At and now let's meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Right there. Mr. X. How do you do, Mr. X? How do you do? Nice to see you. Where are you from, sir? Los Angeles. From Los Angeles. Panel, needless to say, you will recognize the fact that we have asked our guest to sign Mr. X rather than his own name, only because we're afraid that, uh, let's say, the cadences of his name or some other factor involved might give you too much of, of an interest, one or all of you too much interest in, in uh, the origins of the line that we're seeking. Uh, but I would like to present our panel, if I may, Mr. X. And then will you join me over here, please, sir? You know how we keep score. Yes, I do. Fine. Then let's let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. panel, we can tell you that Mr. X is salaried, deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Arlene French. Well, Mr. X, might I use your services? You might. Would I come to you for them? You might. Would I find you indoors if I wanted your services? Probably. Is that where you do most of your work indoors? Most of it. Uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Then I wouldn't have come for your services. You made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. X, is your work, is your work done for some uh, official agency, the government, state, federal, state, or local government? Yes. Would it be the federal government? Uh, no. Two down and eight to go, Ms. Kilgallen. Would it be the state government? No. 
Three down and seven to go, Mr. Linkletter. John, in all the times I've been here, I've never guessed anybody. <laughs> I could be very brilliant now and guess somebody for the first time. <laughs> but I happen to know who it is, so I'll disqualify myself. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Thank you very much, Art, and I'll talk further to this point later on. Miss Francis? There's no law that says you can't whisper to a friend. That'll be all. <laughs> if I see a friend, I'll whisper to her. <laughs> oh, I know, Art. <laughs> Do you have a position of importance in the city? Rather. Oh, uh, would, would, it, would it be on an elective level? Yes. Are you the mayor of yes. the city of Los Angeles? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's so far. Well, we did very well. <laughs> now, act actually, this is fun. Of course, this is his honor, Mr. Samuel Yorty, mayor of the city of Los Angeles. And this was done deliberately. We were hoping against hope that this would pass you by, and we would present to you the mayor of Los Angeles after it all wound up. But I think the fact that Art was honest enough to to uh, say, I know who it is, and, <laughs> and uh, disqualify him. So probably gave a pretty good lead to, I think to so. the panel, Your Honor. Well, I, saw him, I saw him on television through the whole campaign. He's one of the best television speakers we have in the West. Oh, thank you, I... <laughs> well, that's, that's from a pro, Your Honor. Yeah, that's, that's, that's from a pro. That's fine. Well, as you can see, uh, I think, Bennett, you got your tan in part from the West Coast, didn't you? Yes, it did. And Art looks like he never got off the beach in his life, although he's one of the <laughs> hardest working men in the country. My tan is in part from the West Coast, because I've been out in Los Angeles, as you know, doing some work out there. And Arlene and Dorothy don't need tans, but I guess if they get one... I've just one, been there, though. But we still find L.A. very friendly. <laughs> ah, that's fine. Your Honor, it's, um, I must say, an honor to have you with us. Thank you very much for giving us a part of a Sunday night, and well, much thanks. success to you and to your great city, Los Angeles. Thank you, nice John. You I enjoyed us. being on it. Thank you, sir. Good night. Well, a very good beginning, panel. Let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Gail. Ryan. Brown. Is it Miss or Mrs. Brown? Mrs. Mrs. Brown. And where are you from? New York City. New York City. Fine. Well, these people will all be familiar to you, but I, may I present our panel? Mrs. Brown, will you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score, Mrs. Brown? Yes. All right, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. can tell you that uh, Mrs. Brown is salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Cerf. <clears throat> Mrs. Brown, do you perform your service in or about New York City? Yes. Is it a personal kind of service? Yes. Uh, in other words, you come more or less into contact with the people whom you serve? Yes. Do you ever touch them physically? Yes. Uh, do you do you serve both sexes, male and female? Yes. Uh, when you service them, do you touch them usually above the neck? Yeah. Bennett, it's hard. I will try to equate this in terms of you having this service, which is a consummation devoutly to be wished, I might say. <laughs> And it would be hard, you know, to say specifically that percentage-wise it was necessarily in any rigid term of reference in one area more than the other. It can be both above and below, I think. I see. Well, Mrs. Brown, judging by the fact that John wishes me to have this service, do you improve the people in some way that to, to whom you render this service? Yes. Let's say, for whatever it is that the people at that moment have in mind, uh, <laughs> the service that Mrs. Brown gives does intend to improve their attitudes towards what it is they really would like to have her do. 
Mrs. Brown, uh, do you teach people how to do something that they may not have known how to do before they come no. to you? No. That's one dollar nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, as a result of their coming to you, Mrs. Brown, uh, do they have more or less of anything when they leave you? <laughs> Well, I would think, if I may say here, that while we would have to agree that they might not necessarily have more or less of anything as a direct result of the particular service uh, which Mrs. Brown gives, it is possible that as an extension of this service, in some cases, they might have more or less. <laughs> well, may I rule out barbering or hairdressing? Yes. Uh, do you measure the people for anything? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Linkletter. Uh, do you do this by yourself, or do you have... Uh, you, let me phrase this correctly. You do not do this with the help of anyone. No. This yes. is three yes, down. Yes. Wait a minute. That's, that's a yes. That sort of I do not do it with the help of anyone. That's right. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, Art. Yeah. <laughs> I've been watching I got this so show. used to giving you no's, you know, that I... I <laughs> I've been learning the sneaky ways to keep talking. <laughs> uh, does what you do... Uh, in the way of service take less uh, than an hour? Sometimes. Now, to beat an old cliché to death and to go back to your old, your previous question, you know, no man is an island. I trust that the question that you asked previously understands that all of us tend to have the cooperation of our fellows in almost any action which we take. This is not suggesting that... Uh, in giving you the affirmative answer to the question next precedent to the one you just asked. <laughs> that uh, our guest works entirely alone. There are other people involved generally in what is going on. May we have the next guest? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, does it involve the use of any equipment? It does involve the use of equipment. Yes. Um, and... Uh, Art, why don't you recognize Mrs. Brown and disqualify yourself? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I, uh, you, would, uh, you would perform this service. Let, let me review this very briefly. I've forgotten who she is. <laughs> she touches both sexes. And uh, has equipment. she has equipment. There's no, <laughs> no call for conference. I'm about to disqualify myself on other grounds. Uh, is, uh, is, is this something you could subscribe to, or would you pay for it each time? <laughs> you can't answer that. Is your question, is this something you'd subscribe to? Yes. That'll be three down and seven to oh, go, Oh, thank Fred. God. <laughs> Do the people that you touch do they have something on other than their ordinary clothes? Yes. Is it something briefer than their ordinary clothes? Yes. Uh, in the matter of health, would they, should they uh, feel better as a result of what you do for them? Yes. Is it anything that has to do with chiropractic or osteopath work? No. No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Brown, I think we neglected to ask you whether or not you work for a profit-making organization. We did neglect to ask that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Do no. you work for a profit-making organization? No. That's very good, well, Bennett. Five down and five to go, Mr. Joe <laughs> Down. Uh, is this organization housed in a building of uh, more than three stories? Yes. Uh, does it have anything to do with the medical profession? Yes. Are you a nurse? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Linkletter. Hmm. Do, uh, the, uh, yes, let's have a conference. 30 seconds. 30 seconds for a conference. Yes. Uh, did you uh, graduate from a school with any kind of a uh, degree of any kind in order to enable you to be qualified to do this work? Yes. Uh, you... Are some branch of a doctor? Do you? Yes. What branch have you got in mind? You are a doctor. That's right. <laughs> now, what, did I win? No. <laughs> well, I did. Where's my prize? No, actually, Art, I think we would have to agree that you, you have won. But just for fun, let's see if you can figure out the special area of medicine in which our guest doctor 
Brown. Is she is an epidermologist. Not uh, stepping down in Petigo, Miss Francis. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> she was in the skin game, is what he had in mind. <laughs> uh, is it uh, dentistry? No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Do you have anything to do with anesthetics, Dr. Brown? Yeah. Are you nice going, Betty? Nice going. Good good. Good good. Dr. Brown is an anesthesiologist, right? Right. I once didn't do that properly, and I got more mail knocking my head in. I've forgotten what I did say, but I didn't say anesthesiologist. I left a vowel out, or perhaps oh, yeah. a... Yes, yeah, somewhere along the line. Now, you were in your first year of residency at a hospital in New York. That's right. It's St. Luke's Hospital at Morningside and uh, 113th ah, Street. That's, that's a great hospital. Right next to Columbia yeah. University. Right? Right. Next to Columbia University. And I might say, yeah, and if, if Dr. Brown doesn't mind, that to get a residency at St. Luke's, you have to be um, outstanding in the, in, in the field of, of those who are searching for a full career in, the, in medicine. Congratulations. Thank it's a great hospital. Much. And uh, I think from your appearance with us, we can say two things. One, that you're lucky to be in St. Luke's, and two, St. Luke's is lucky to have you. Nice to have you with us, <laughs> Dr. Brown. Will so you say good night to the family? <laughs> well, we meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from us. One thing I must clean up so that the folks up around Columbia University don't have to write me letters, it's Dr. Ryan and Mrs. Brown, who is our preceding guest. This can be very... But if you're an anesthesiologist, it doesn't make much difference because after you've been with your patient for a little while, he doesn't care. <laughs> now, doc, Dr. Ryan has, has recently become Mrs. Brown, so that there oh. are two names here oh. to be considered, you know? Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery guest for which as you all know the panel is always blindfolded blindfolds all in place panel yes John. That's good will you enter mystery challenger and sign in please In the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, we'll begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> Have you ever been a panelist on this program? Yes. Mr. Linkletter. Uh, you are in show business? Yes. Miss Francis. Uh, the picture part of show business? Mm, sometimes. Mr. Sir. Have you got a regular new television show beginning this coming week? Yes. Joey Bishop? <laughs> I wonder how he ever got listed on the New York Stock Exchange. I wonder how he ever got listed. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you sing? Yes, sometimes. Is this a variety show? That no. You'll... Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Do you mostly perform in television? Yes. Mr. Sir? You use that voice when you're doing your show. <laughs> no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it a variety show? No. That, that was asked, Dorothy, oh, and the I'm, answer was no I'm to that. I'm terribly sorry. I'm, I'm just flustered. You have about another one thing. coming to you. Um, is it a situation comedy series? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Linkletter. It's an action adventure show laid in the High Sierras. No. <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Francis. What's left? <laughs> situation comedy. Is it a mystery show? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. <laughs> Sir. It is I'm, to me. Have you got a very lovely wife who sometimes appears with you? No. <laughs> Is it a music show? That's seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it a music show? No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Lakeletter. You are a newscaster of some kind. No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. I don't think this fellow's working. We've been through it. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, now, wait a minute. What other shows are there? Um, uh, audience show. Situation comedy, mystery, western. Variety. Variety. Action adventure. Action adventure. Panel. panel. Audience show. Is it an audience show? No. 
Ten down and no more to go. You may unmask panel and meet an old friend. <laughs> old Dick. <laughs> Dick Fowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a, you know, I was hung up, too, on the question. I thought that Miss June had appeared with Dick in, in uh, the series, the Dick no. Powell show, but they, he, never that? has no. June been in the show. No. Never. The show is not audience participation, it's not mystery, it's not Western, it's the Dick Powell show. show. What is and the it, Dick Powell no show? No one knows. Well, it's, it's, well, it's, it's a new series of, of drama. Yeah. Drama, drama programs, and nobody... Oh, it's, oh, it's yeah. like an anthology. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's right. Oh. And Tuesday night, it's NBC, a 9 week to 10. From, a week right. from Tuesday. That's right. <laughs> and this is where Bennett, I knew you were wrong, and Bennett went barreling right down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a week after. It's I should have known Tuesday. that voice. That well, June had an operation. My voice is higher, you see. <laughs> you, you used to sound that way on the Hollywood Hotel. I sure did, yeah. And I have the old movies to prove it. Is June with you? Yes, yes. Oh, sure, she's backstage. Miss June! I thought that was done very skillfully. You notice how I got Dick out of the seat. I'm sitting down. June is sitting down. He's standing up. Yeah, no, I don't think he knew. How nice to see you both again. Oh, Thank golly. you. And you've never been on, on, the, on Dick's... No, Dick's not his new one. Not his new one. That's great. Nor the Zangray Theater. She's, no, the, she's no, afraid well, of horse. No, I, I have, her. too. But not with me, darling. I'm terribly sorry. Please don't allow me to stop. You, he wasn't there. <laughs> you afraid of horses? Yes, sir. With four legs, or they bother you? Or if they got two, you don't mind? Even six. Even six horses <laughs> bother you, too? Well, it's wonderful to see you both again. And, Dick, needless to say, we all wish you tremendous success with the new series. We Thank you, John. Tuesday on NBC. We need some good drama. And if I know anybody that I felt I've grown up with in this whole world of entertainment who can produce it, you're it. Thank you, John. It's going to be good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to see you, Dick. What happened, panel? I must admit that you've done fairly well tonight, and we'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. Now, thank you for a very pleasant evening, panel, and more specifically, good night, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John, and I have something I have to do, too. I knew I wouldn't get it right the first time, but I'm going to get it right the second time. Art Linkletter's new book is called Kids Still Say the Darndest Things, and it's going to appear in the October McCall's magazine. Good night, Art. Well, thank you, Dorothy. I'm so glad you made the mistake. <laughs> nice to see you again, Arlene. Thank you, Say Art. hello to Martin for me. I will. And nice to have had you here. And good night, dear Bennett. I was convinced we were going to have Roger Mara tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's how smart I was. Good night, John. Good night, Bennett. And I think I ought to tell Bennett this. One reason we don't have Roger Maris tonight is because we knew Bennett Surf would be absolutely convinced that we were going to have Roger Maris tonight. <laughs> How's that feel, Bennett? Okay. That's all right? Yeah. Anyway, he's promised to Perry Como. He's promised to Perry Como? Does he sing, too, besides him? No. <laughs> no, but he, he and Mantle are going to be on the first Como show, I believe. Oh, and they oh. can't do anything else. I wouldn't life. think so. That's good. Now that so you've it's... got Bennett all warmed up, maybe we'll have Roger Maris next week. In any event, thank you all for joining us on What's My Line. <laughs> What's My Line? is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totman. Families, children, the sick, the aging. Your united campaign helps them all through many vital services. Give your fair share.